All right, well, I'm finally back at it here. I'm about to rivet the skin to the skeleton of the vertical stabilizer. I've been procrastinating for a few weeks um, because this will be the first time I'm using the rivet gun uh, and bucking bar on the real airplane, and I wanted to get some practice first. Uh, so I've used these tools before on the practice kits, but you know, you use a several different techniques. You use the squeezer, you use the rivet gun with a back rivet plate, you use the rivet gun with a bucking bar, but you don't do a whole lot of any one technique. So, uh, you know, with a, I've probably used that combination of tools on a, you know, a total of maybe 20 rivets or so. Uh, and I wanted to, I wanted to get a little more practice than that. And I also wanted to practice having to rivet in tight quarters because one of the things about the steps I'm about to undertake is you have to reach in like this with you know bucking bar in one hand, rivet gun on the other, work sort of blind, you know, in, in, in these tight quarters. And I wanted to see if I could practice that a little bit. So you know what I what I did uh, last weekend was I took some scrap uh, that's the same thickness of the ribs and the, the skin. Uh, bent some flanges into some pieces and, and basically just, you know, tried to simulate what that would be like and actually uh, sort of um, uh, created a, uh, a shroud, a tube, created a thing like this out of cardboard that I could kind of reach into uh, and practice a little bit with. Kind of dorky, I didn't film it, but uh, that's what I did. So, um you know, hopefully that helped. Uh, I do seem to have improved the first few rivets. Uh, you know, they were a disaster. It's a good thing they weren't on the real plane because I, I think I'd just, you know, throw this whole thing away and start over. So um, anyway, it, it did seem to help. So uh, that's what, you know, I'm about to do. I'll talk real quick about the order that you have to go in because if you don't do these next few steps in an ex a very specific order, uh, you'll end up basically trapping yourself, you know, sealing yourself off from being able to access and, and, and do some of the rivets. So uh, quickly and from memory, obviously I'll refer very carefully to the plans when I'm really doing this, but um, if anyone's interested, uh, the, the first, uh, you take this nose rib out, which I've done, uh, you reach in and starting with this, this rivet closest to the front spar here, rivet uh, this nose rib, the middle nose rib, both sides. The plans, I didn't think the plans were super clear about whether you needed to, you know, work your way up on both sides sort of symmetrically or if you could just do one side then the other. I'm going to do it symmetrically because I can't imagine that that would be bad. And um, it'll be a little bit of a pain because I'll have to keep flipping stuff back and forth. But anyway, uh, so middle nose rib, then you do the top front part, you know, the forward part of the top rib forward of this front spar. Then uh, you can put this guy back in and rivet it to the skin, uh, but not to the spar itself because you need to take this guy out and you know, those shear rivets. Uh, so then you can take that guy out. The next thing you want to rivet is the, the front, all these rivets that hold the front spar, hold the skin of the front spar. You do one side and then the other because you'll have to take uh, clecos off to be able to lift the skin up. You know, I guess you can do a combination of reaching in through here for these, but obviously you have to lift the skin up to get to those the rivets on the far side there. And you don't want to take both sides off at the same time because you need one side to, to hold the structure, you know, to hold the rigidity while you rivet the other side, then you can flip it over and do the other. So. Uh, yeah, so you know, all these rivets of the front spar. Um, then you can uh, do this guy, this middle end spar rib and the top rib. Um, you get to this guy by reaching through here. And just like you did up here. Then you can come along and rivet this, you know, the skin to this bottom, or the uh, yeah, bottom end spar rib. Also rivet him to the spars now. I'm done with that. And then the only thing really left is uh, you know all the rivets along the, the, the rear spar down here. And then uh, just a few rivets 
along here that rivet the, the, um, the spar to the spar cap, which is under here. The very first part I made, actually. So uh, that'll be it. But that's the order. Um, and you know, again, if you if you don't do it in, order, in that order, uh, you could get to where you can't reach something. And uh, I think it's going to be tight anyway. Um, you know, you've got to bend the skin or lift the skin and reach under there without creasing it. Um, you know, I'm just going to have to be real careful. So that's what I'm about to do. So I'll get started. All right, well, so here we go. Um, I proceed very slowly and carefully uh, here with this first uh, first rivet and really pretty much every one after that as I you know slowly build up my skill and confidence, but that takes a while. I've got it propped up on some boxes uh, with towels so that I'm not so that it's not sitting directly on the Clecos. Um, I've laid it down on the Clecos before and it hasn't caused any kind of little you know dents or, or anything, but you know I've always been real careful and that's when I wasn't you know, using a, a rivet gun against it. So I figured this uh, was better. And someone had left a comment, said, you know, you might want to prop it up. So I think that was a good good move, good point. Um, probably wondering what's with the headlamp, but uh, obviously it's so I can see up in there. Um, it was kind of hard to get the headlamp and my eyes both pointed up in there at the same time uh, because it's kind of narrow. So I do end up using my little flashlight a lot. Um, but yeah, it went fine. Um, Checked it with the little uh, gauge and then, you know, my calipers. This shot up in here didn't really, uh, it didn't really focus very well, so you can just barely see it, but thought I'd include that. And then from the top here, uh, it looks great, you know, I didn't. Didn't dent anything, didn't leave any real marks. Um, I'm really happy with the way that one turned out. So that was it. That was the first rivet. Um, now I flip the whole thing over, move my boxes around a little bit, carefully lay it on the other side, and do the rivet exactly opposite that one, uh, just forward of the front spar on the middle nose rib. To me, the plans weren't, uh, they weren't, really clear on whether you needed to alternate side to side and be, and go you know symmetrically toward the toward the leading edge or if you could just do one side and flip it over and do the other side I felt like this was the safest bet I didn't see that anything you know that you could hurt anything by staying symmetrical people are probably going to wonder why didn't you just leave it standing on end and then you could you know, just switch hands, right? Reach in with your left hand, use the rivet gun in your right for one side, then switch hands and reach in with your right hand and use the rivet gun in your left hand for the opposite side. Uh, the main reason I didn't do that is I'm not a very ambidextrous person, so I didn't feel comfortable switching hands. Uh, I'm sure I'll have to get better at that with time, but for now, this is the way I felt comfortable. I also felt like it would be better just having it laying down and it'd be more stable. Uh, so. Uh, that's what I did for now, and it worked out fine. A little bit tedious, but worked fine. All right, so that one went all right. First one went all right. This one got a little bit, get it just right with the angle. You can see there's a little bit of a dent on the far side where I suspect the cup or the um, the mushroom, the edge of the mushroom set. It, if I was using one that had the rubber cup on it, probably wouldn't have had that happen. But I have one of those, and it was recommended. Um, but I couldn't get good at it. I I found that the the rubber ring, which sticks out a little bit past the edge of the mushroom, would push the skin away and the rivet wouldn't end up seated. It's sticking out a little bit. So I may have to go back. I either have to get really good at this one or go back and learn how to use the other one. So far that's not too bad. When that's scuffed up and painted and not reflecting the light, that is the least of my worries. 
yeah, to be honest, I had totally forgotten about that until I went back and was, uh, you know, rewatching the video to edit it. And, uh, you know, you can, you can barely see it uh, unless you know where to look and you catch it in the light just right, which, you know, once the plane's painted and everything, um, you know, you won't even be able to see it. So I'm going to speed things way up here uh, because everything went really smoothly uh, until I got in a little closer to the leading edge and it got a little tighter. Ah, dented it. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to have to drill that one out. Dang it. All right, maybe I'll show this. Or I'll try to show this. So what happened there? Well, first of all, got a little dent. Not bad. It's actually just a little ring, just a little ring mark. Rivet looks good up top and the bottom. So... Not terrible, but it's kind of leaning over. Not sure how that's showing up actually. Too much light. No, too much light. All right, but then there's also that little gap between the flange and the skin that I wish was not there. So, so yeah, so I'll go ahead and I drill it out. Um, it went really smoothly, no big deal. Didn't enlarge the hole any, head came off cleanly. Uh, it took me a while to get the shank out because I didn't, you know, I, I wanted to be real careful doing that. And then I also uh, spent a lot of time blowing with compressed air and sucking out with the shop vac. Uh, and I even took some pieces of tape and sort of slid them up in between the skin and the flange because I wanted to make sure I got all the debris out of there uh, before I you know, tried to rivet it again. Once I riveted it again, it all pulled in nice and tight and everything went fine. So. I thought about trying to show this whole process of drilling it out in real time uh, if anyone was interested, but it was just way, way, way uh, too much footage. So I'm going to speed things up here and move on past that and the last couple of rivets in this um, nose rib and get on to the top rib uh, because everything else here is pretty much more of the same. All right, yeah, so, uh, you know, compared to that, using the squeezer is pretty easy and quick. I'm able to stand the whole thing on end and just alternate back and forth, work my way uh, forward from the from the uh, front spar to the leading edge. Uh, I think it's about 10 rivets here on this uh, the front part of the top rib. Okay, uh, so that was relatively easy. Camera died on me halfway, but anyway, uh, I was kind of proud of myself in a backward sort of way. I actually had to drill one of these out, this one here, um, sadly. Uh, it kind of went sideways on me with the squeezer, and the reason I say I'm proud of myself is I actually just use the, the gun and the bucking bar. It, it was easier to just get that up in here. The squeezer was kind of tight. It worked fine on this one, but um, not as much on this one. So anyway, I was able to, you know, buck that one. Turned out fine. So yeah. So next step is to put, next step is to put this guy back in there and uh, rivet those. So that should be pretty easy, not too tight at quarters or anything. Yep, pretty easy. So uh, get the squeezer adjusted and then uh, away I go, back and forth. Um, did the same thing where I worked my way forward uh, from the spar to the leading edge, uh, you know, alternating sides. Um, I guess I'm talking about setting up the squeezer there. And then uh, there's also some holes that I skip because those are for fairing screws. So those are the ones with the tape over it. And it was easier to just climb up on the table here and do these last couple. Um, and that's about it. So at this point, uh, everything forward of the front spar is riveted. So I'm going to go ahead and end this one here. Uh, I did come down a little later that same day and rivet to the front spar. Um, but this video has already gotten pretty long. I had planned on showing all the riveting of the skin to the skeleton in one video, but there's just no way um, that that's 
that'd be a, a really long video. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here, and I'll pick up where I left off in the next one.